The path towards strength and power in anime is riddled with endless violence and has been chased by many. But there are a handful of stories that challenge the violence and seek to ascend it. However, Makoto Kimaru's Vinland Saga does not simply seek to ascend the violence, as it also acts as a critique to societies that are ruled by war, slavery, masculinity, and death. Yukimaru does this all in a single scene. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Lost Futures. I am lost. <laughs> also, I want to throw out a huge thank you to FD Signifier for shouting me out. It means the world, and I thought I was going to throw that Talking Titan video into the void and just get it out there, but it's been seen by over 6,000 people now, and it's remarkable it's unreal so welcome to all who subbed and who've watched that video thank you for comedy thank you for joining me and this time i got lost thanks to the creator victory the creator who made me reflect a bit about anime it was one line that spurred this video as they reflect on how male characters such as goku naruto and deku and others walk an endless path of attaining power and strength and you know, Finland Saga follows a similar path, as readers or watchers watch Thorfinn become this ruthless warrior. But this initial setup leads to a twist. It's a twist that fundamentally changes how the manga works and presents violence. But it is also a way for Yukimaru to challenge Thorfinn's path of blood and violence. It is these challenges that lead Thorfinn to seek out an alternative society, and Yukimaru does this brilliantly by continuously mentioning Finland, which is also beautifully described in a single line. Far to the west, across the sea, there is a place called Finland. It is warm and fertile, far from slavery and the fires of war. One manga or anime that I am very familiar with that follows the typical path of strength is Attack on Titan, where weak baby Eren vows to become stronger and not to cry, as crying and non-actions are what the weak do. Rather, he desires to be strong so that he could kill them all, and the only way he can do that is through power. I won't be talking all length about Attacking Titan because I spent an hour in my last video. So if you want to watch that, and you want to watch me shred it, go there. Attacking Titan is one of many examples in anime where authors present young boys with problems that are so often solved through the use of power, brute strength, and violence. However, Yukimaru's Finland Saga takes a different and much more interesting path. Vinland Saga and Attack on Titan share similarities, but Vinland Saga was written with key components that elevate it above your typical shonen and seinen manga, and this has to do with what core message is being displayed, but also how characters change and grow and evolve. Although people state that Eren evolves, he doesn't, as his hatred and desire to kill all of them remains until the end. Furthermore, Ishiyama never goes beyond violence, and he never gives his characters time to dwell on death and their actions. The only time it is dwelled on is with Ervin Smith, Levi, when he thinks about how many comrades have died, whenever Marco is brought up, and with Reiner, 
who, in my opinion, was done dirty. Other than that, death is brushed off by the main cast. So on one hand, Attack on Titan's solution to everything always seems to be violence. And that is because, as I argue in my last video, it is pro-fascist and admires a strong military man who takes action and fights. Those who do not fight, those who are anti-war, those who want peace, are never really shown and secondly are demeaned and scrutinized. On the other hand, Vinland Saga written in 2005 starts very differently as it begins out of order where Thorfinn is already a killing machine. But Yukimaru ties it back to the beginning with this great scene where Thorfinn is on a long boat. He's reminded of his father and that story of Vinland. So unlike Attack and Titan, Yukimaru places key ideas and themes in the very beginning to sway the plot and the story transitions. Yukimaru does this through the character of Thor, who is Thorfinn's father and a deserter of the young Vikings. Thor has every characteristic that anime fanboys like. He is big and strong and has fought in countless battles, but like King Fritz, when we are introduced to him, Thor has renounced war and violence. For example, Look at his expression when war is declared. Yukimaru draws the joy of the young who have never seen war and contrasts it brilliantly with Thor's body language of complete despair because he has seen what has occurred in war. In his own words, he has murdered countless of people. And it's great. He also agrees to fight in the war because his home, the island, the people on it are held hostage. Or when his son is captured by the mercenaries. Now you might say this is the same as Eren. Eren had to slaughter everyone because Perides was to be exterminated. There was no alternative. But if that's the case, why didn't Eren and his crew play defense? Why did he infiltrate and kill innocents? Why didn't he use the genie founder to erase the hatred of the Eldians? Or use the founder to wish away the Titan powers? There was always an alternative. Thor's shows the reader this alternative as he could have killed every single mercenary but it would have came at a cost his son would have died the crew would have died everyone would have died and so for the safety of his crew and his son he gives his life and they live the crew lives the son lives he succeeded but it costs his life his final line is part of the thesis of the manga a true warrior does not need a sword now does Thorfinn, son of Thor's, listen? No, he, he becomes consumed with hate like Eren, and at the dead of night, as the darkness consumes the ocean, the mercenaries hear an angry growl from the stolen longship. A ten-year-old boy stands there, with eyes filled with bloodlust, howling into the darkness of the night, screaming, I'm gonna fucking kill you! I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. And seriously, it's one of the most horrifying scenes in the entire manga. And it's it's great. It shows you how consumed Thorfinn is with hatred. And you gotta understand that Thorfinn here is six years old. It's crazy of how much hatred he carries because they killed his father and so we are taken on a story of revenge and it kind of mirrors uh, Red Dead Redemption a bit but it's it's actually it actually has a lot more time to dwell on death and Thorfinn's actions and so yeah it's it's cool but I'm, I'm gonna kind of cover the prologue a bit more because you have to understand what kind of actions Thorfinn's committed what kind of crimes he committed and how that impacts him. Yukimaru's first saga, the prologue, is all about violence and death. As we follow Thorfinn, who forces himself to join this guy because he wants to avenge his father. The first part really reeled in a crowd of action and those who love the violence because Kimura does not hold back in displaying the historical raids of the Viking. The violence he illustrates is on a new level and the anime adaptation enhances it. But Yukimaru is not interested in telling a story of violence. What he's really interested in is how Thorfinn is impacted by battle and war. We see these acts after Thorfinn had just killed innocent, burned a village, and returns to the march with broken bones. Now unlike Eren who stares into a mirror and tells himself to 
by Kimaru shows the reader Thorfinn's anguish as he is forcing himself to march on. There is a single line of dialogue and it's brilliantly paired with the anguish on Thorfinn's face. It's a face that hates killing, that hates war, and most of all, hates of what Thorfinn has become. It is also in this moment that Yukimaru is showing the reader that this is Thorfinn's choice. He could abandon the march and abandon his quest for revenge, but he continues. By the end of the saga, Thorfinn becomes a... You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. After he beats Thorkill the Tall, Thorkill ends up being Thorfinn's great uncle, who also fought beside Thors when he was part of the Yom's Vikings. It's here where Thorkill explains that Thors had the eyes of a true warrior, and that he somehow surpassed violence and attained a new level of strength. Thor somehow became a true warrior. After this point, the story enters what I call the Hamlet, or more accurately, the Game of Thrones phase, where Prince Canute and the crew go on a quest to kill the king and take over the kingdom. The person who ends up killing the king and taking the crown would be this guy, but it is in this moment where Canute kills him, showing the kingdom he is capable of taking justice. At the same time, Thorfinn watches his prey die by Canute's hand. And in rage, he attacks the new king, but he gets subdued and he loses his will to live. The prologue ends with Thorfinn getting sold as a slave. The next arc is one that is hated by those who came into Vinland Saga wanting a Viking action anime or manga, where in every panel there is an endless stream of senseless violence, killing, bloodshed, and death. Yukimaru drops all of that and what the readers are introduced to is a slow and reflective arc known as the farming arc. Small edit here, I just realized that I did not fully speak about the genius of the farming arc. I think what's so special about this part of the story is that it recontextualizes the violence and the action that was showcased in the prologue. Hence, the excessive violence used in the prologue gets to be used as a method of communicating something to the audience. It becomes something of meaning, and Yukimaru isn't the first one to do this, as Berserk does it, One Punch Man does it, One Piece does it. All of these do this, but the recontextualization is barely ever seen. And this may be because it is recontextualized into a feeling of guilt and a sense of haunting. It's an arc that tackles and displays the consequences of Thorfinn's actions as he is haunted by those who he has killed. There's one chapter that I can never forget. It has one panel that is etched into my mind and it showcases the nightmares Thorfinn has been having. It's a panel where he almost shows all the people Thorfinn has killed and they're dragging him back to hell or back into a life of violence. But Thorfinn does not fall as he clings onto an edge. But that's when the bodies begin to pile up and cling onto him. And so Thorfinn, feeling horrified, begins to kick them. But that's when Ashilad returns. Telling him that this is not hell, but the real world, where everyone is perceived as an enemy. And this was where Thorfinn had lived. Shilad tells Thorfinn to not kick them, but instead to look them into their eyes, to face them, to hear their curses. And so Thorfinn begins to apologize, but Ashilad explains that sorry isn't enough. That Thorfinn's true battle is to climb out of the life of violence and to live with all of those who he has killed hanging on his back and to walk a path where he atones for his sins. And so Yukimaru here is not only dwelling on death, but he is challenging Thorfinn psychologically. First, there's Thorfinn's PTSD episodes. There's also the weight of living with the crimes and the murders he has committed. It's this weight that shifts Thorfinn's view of violence and makes him vow to never use violence as a means of solving a problem. After this, Thorfinn edges closer to how his father was. The main thesis of the manga ties back 
what drives Thorfinn to keep on living as first. He wants to make up for the sins he has committed, but he also wants to escape this violent Viking hell by going to Vinland. However, Thorfinn does not simply want to go to Vinland to escape the Viking hell, but rather he wants to try to eliminate warfare and slavery from the world by creating a better society. A society where people can live at ease and in peace with each other. And to be honest, it's one of the best dreams a manga and anime character can ever have. Like, seriously, Naruto has like, I'm gonna be the Hokage thing. Goku's like, I'm gonna become the most powerful man on the world by beating up people. Uh, Luffy, yeah, I don't know if it beats Luffy. But it's ambitious and it's creative, right? It kind of speaks to Mark Fisher's capitalist realism, is there no alternative? Uh, this is where, this is kind of like Yukimoto saying, hey, there's this huge society, Thorfinn is powerless, like he can't be like Goku or Naruto or Luffy and he can't just go in and punch and kill the king and take over and create a world without peace and slavery, a world without war and slavery. Rather he's saying, okay, if that's the case, right, because I'm working in a historical setting, I'm going to take Thorfinn and I'm going to take him to Vinland, to North America and create, as an author, a land where there is no war, there is no slavery, and it's quite peaceful. Um, I don't know how this works out because I haven't caught up with the manga. I don't, they're in Vinland right now, but I don't know how it works out. But it's super cool. Like, you know, you don't see that all day. You don't see Luffy being like, you know what, man? I'm going to make the world peaceful without war and slavery. Dude's a pirate. Like, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> Yukimoto ends this arc with a brilliant contrast with King Canute as Yukimoto here is tying aspects of Macbeth and Hamlet into the manga and he shows Canute having this ultimate power and an army that can take over any land but he's stuck paranoid and is portrayed talking to the head of his father, the head that laughs at him and tells them this is the curse of the crown my boy. It's a brilliant way of showcasing how violent acts and positions of power have prices on them. In conclusion, violence is bad. But is it all bad? I don't know where Vinland Saga ends. I hope that Thorfinn does not colonize Turtle Island. But what I do know is that as Thorfinn prepares to journey to the far west, he has encountered people who he has harmed in the past. For an example, he runs into the Huntress Hild, who was overtaken by revenge, and Thorfinn sees his younger self in her. To mend the wound, Thorfinn goes as far as giving her his life, but he also shows her that he has a mission to accomplish, and that he cannot die yet. This echoes a theme that many animes present, and it's best said by the skeleton mad Brook from One Piece, who once said, Death is the easy way out. So in all, it's a rather interesting take on the Viking era and the Viking setting, where everything is normally centered on violence and battle. Here, Yukimaru flips that and takes a stance of non-violence. The stance shines in the farming arc and the arcs that follow. It shines because, in a sense, Yukimaru is trying something new and is also challenging himself to write a story that is now centered on inaction and non-violence. Furthermore, Yukimaru is going against the grain of popular anime and manga, which is fascinating because as Victory the Creator points out, most of these stories are about some dude who is chasing power and strength. I think what Yukimaru is ultimately saying here is that true strength is not derived from senseless violence and killing, but from restraint and seeking other methods. There is also a message that counters hate and one that echoes those who have protested in the Vietnam War. My conscience won't let me go shoot my brother or uh, some darker people or uh, some poor hungry people in the mud for big powerful America and shoot them for what? They never call me nigger. They never lynch me. They never put no dogs on me. They never rob me of my nationality and rape and kill my mother and father. What well, I'm going to shoot them for what? How can I go shoot them? Them little poor little black people, little babies and children and women. How can I shoot them poor people? I would just take me to jail. The Iraq War, the Afghan, the current Syrian, Yemen, and Ukrainian wars. It is a message that states, why should I hate them? Why should I hate anyone? We do not have any enemies. Now Marxists may disagree with this sentiment because there is no war but the class war. 
However, the overall stance that Yukimaru takes is one that stands against war. Yukimaru makes it clear early on that there is no reason to be excited to go to war or to support the war. This account is also mirrored in real life by veterans who went to war as young, naive youths and saw the horrors with their own eyes. By the end of the farming arc, this stand against war transformed to one that is anti-imperial as Thorfinn and King Canute come face to face with an epic battle of ideas. However, there are layers here, because one can also read that line, a true warrior does not need a sword, as a true man slash person is not one who fights with a sword or his fists like Eden, but rather one who challenges their emotions and seeks an alternative, an alternative that does not harm the innocent. Finland Saga then acts as a critique of the manosphere and those in it who admire the Vikings for their brute strength and ideas of masculinity. Yukimaru is basically saying that the manosphere and the mentality that men ought to fight and talk with their fists is wrong and silly. It is silly and it is further causing harm. The men who should be admired are those who are like Thor and Thorfinn, those who denounce war, those who do not seek the endless path of strength or power, but rather walk a path of kindness, a path that seeks to heal those who they have harmed. However, Yukimaru is not against all violence. Thorfinn and Thors still do fight, but to defend. This stance on when to use violence or action can be translated to how in real life action is necessary. If there are Nazis or fascists who are parading through the streets, if we ever see them and their presence grow in our communities, it is our duty to go out there and to punch them in the face. Hey, just a small injection here. It's not just about the Nazis who are parading the streets. That's not the entire picture here. This is just one example that I'm presenting. Because in reality, like really and really speaking, I'm trying to calm my nerves here because what the hell's going on in the States? This is like the bother boy rant of the video. Props to bother boy for everything he's done. But seriously, it is the power systems that inflict this injustice as well, right? If you, and this is, this is where... You know, people say, if you vote, politicians will change things. Sometimes action is necessary. Sometimes it is necessary to go out there in the streets and to protest and to fight for your rights. You know, in principle, it is about standing up against oppression. It is fighting against those systems that are oppressing people who are stripping away rights from women, black people, African American, Afro Canadians, indigenous people, Arabs, gay people, trans people, and of course, non-binary people. Therefore, violence is sometimes necessary to push back against injustice, and historians and thinkers alike have explored this. One article that explores this at length was written by Natalie Zamone Davis in her 1973 Rights of Violence. Finally, Yukimaro shows and displays the growth of Thorfinn as he moves past the hate, past the revenge, and begins to walk a path that allows him to atone for his sins, the sins that he has committed. However, he is also still carrying his violent past with him, and he uses such a past to aspire to create a better world where people can live in peace without slavery and the fires of war. So this is the official end of the video, and if you liked it, press like. If you want to watch more, please subscribe, um, and share it. Please share this video. Do it. Just, just do it! <laughs> I think what I like the most about Finland Saga and this is kind of like my final, final last words, is that the struggle here is, at the end of the day, it's Thorfinn struggling with his violent tendencies, and it's almost as if Yukimaru's also struggling as well, because, you know, it's hard to draw and to center a manga that's been so prevalent on action and violence and death and blood and slaughter and, you know, all that gore and the heads getting chopped off, the fingers getting chopped off, and, you know, you got these awesome battles being drawn. Imagine going from that to non-violence. It's amazing. But Thorfinn has a challenge up ahead for him, and it's a challenge that he can no longer fight. He can no longer kill, and if he kills one more, he can't take it. And it's amazing, it's awesome how he shows growth of the character through the struggle and the continuous struggle of fighting against the hate, fighting against the violence, fighting against the easy way out of just killing the man. And that's where I'm ending. 
100% go read, go watch Vinland. It's awesome. It's probably one of the best mangas and animes I've ever watched in my entire life. And this is me just plopping it up on the table and being like, yo, you gotta watch it. It's awesome. It's a 10 out of 10. Um, and I cannot wait to see where it goes. I cannot wait till they reach Vinland and I hope they don't colonize the Turtle Island. Uh, that would suck. <laughs> like imagine. <laughs> Imagine if it leads to that, right? That would be terrible. Um, yeah, these are my last thoughts. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll catch you some other time. Bye.